In the name of Jesus, amen. Our text for tonight is the psalm that King David wrote, Psalm 51, that we confessed earlier, sang earlier, especially verse 17 where David writes, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Here ends our text. There are some words that are hard to pronounce, hard to say, such as scrobiculite or anti-logarithm. I'm not going to have you repeat these. Yes, there are some words that are difficult to say, hard to say, and also difficult to pronounce. But there are also some words that are easy to pronounce, but hard to say, such as, I am sorry, or please forgive me, or I was wrong, or I have sinned, O Lord. These are easy to pronounce, but hard to say, because our sinful flesh does not want us to admit that we are poor, miserable sinners, and it will do everything it can to hide sin or to deny that we are sinners. It was hard for King David to admit that he'd done wrong. As a matter of fact, he did not say the words, I have sinned, for almost a year. He didn't say them until the prophet Nathan confronted David with his sin. What sins did David commit? First of all, he broke the ninth commandment by coveting Bathsheba, someone else's wife. Then he broke the sixth commandment by committing adultery against her. Then he tried to cover up these sins by committing more sins Then he broke the fifth commandment by plotting the death of Uriah, Bathsheba's husband. What sins do you try to cover up? A lie will try to cover up what you've done wrong. Cursing, physical, or verbal abuse is used to control another person and to convince them that you did not do wrong. Sometimes sins of disrespect or murder are used to cover up other sins. Like David, we can try to cover up sins, but we cannot hide anything from God. God even knows the secrets of our heart. We may fool others, but we cannot fool God. If you were God, what would you do to King David? How would you treat him? If if we were in God's shoes, we would have no mercy upon David. We would have him punished. We would have him executed. After all, according to the law of Moses, adultery should be punished by death. This man deserves to die. Make him pay for what he did. That's the kind of judgment we would render. And as a matter of fact, death is exactly what David said the rich man deserves in Nathan's story. When a traveler came for food, the rich man took the only lamb from the poor man to feed the traveler. And David said, as the Lord lives, the rich man who has done this deserves to die. The rich man has plenty of lambs to give this traveler. Why does he take the lamb from the poor man and give it to this traveler? This man, this rich man should die. The prophet Nathan said to David, you are the man. In other words... You are the man who deserves death because of the sin you committed against God, against Bathsheba, and against Uriah. You deserve to die. 
God sent Nathan to preach the law to David. And David then said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord has put away your sin. You shall not die. In Luther's small catechism, the question is asked, what is confession? And the answer, confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins. And second, that we receive absolution, that is forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. What is the first part of confession? It is that we confess our sins. And this is exactly what David did. In Psalm 51, he says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions and wash away, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my sin and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified when you speak and blameless in your judgment. He admitted that he sinned. And he asked God to have mercy upon him. How should you examine yourself? We should always examine ourselves in the light of the Ten Commandments. So are you a son or daughter? Have you been disobedient, unfaithful, or lazy? Or in general, have you wronged anyone by word or deed? The sins that we've committed against God, we should confess them and say, I am sorry, have mercy upon us. The sins that we've committed against our neighbor, we should go to them and say, I am sorry, please forgive me. And if there are those sins which we know and feel in our heart, there is private confession and absolution where we can be honest with God, and then personally and individually hear his word of forgiveness. What is the second part of confession? The second part is that we receive absolution, that is forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting but firmly believing that by it, our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. When, and, and this is exactly what King David believed. He says in Psalm 32, Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. So when you hear the word of absolution, that is the forgiveness of sins, it is as if, Christ himself were standing here, speaking those words to you and removing your sin as far as the east is from the west. Absolution is the very voice of the gospel. In Isaiah chapter 1, the Lord says, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And they, though, though they are red like crimson, they shall become white as wool. And so in Psalm 51, listen, for, listen to the verbs that David uses as synonyms to, of, of, for forgiveness, such as blot out, wash, cleanse. And this is what we ask God to do for our sins. And just as David believed that God is merciful, so also we Look to God as a gracious and merciful God. How do you know God loves you? How do you know he's merciful and gracious to you? He sent his only begotten son to be your savior. 
There on the cross, Christ bore your sins and the punishment of all sin instead of you. There on the cross, he made the righteous sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He is the Lamb of God who has come to take away your sin and take away the sins of the whole world. In Christ, your sins are forgiven. In Christ, God has mercy and, and is gracious to you through faith in Christ as your Savior. We are here tonight in repentance, acknowledging that our sin caused Jesus to die upon the cross. We are here tonight to confess before God that we have transgressed his ways. We are also here tonight to be forgiven and to receive God's mercy in Christ Jesus, not only by means of absolution, but also here in the Lord's Supper, receiving our Lord's body and blood for the forgiveness of all our sins. King David says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. And that is what repentance is all about, is that we will turn from our evil and live. It means that we are sorry for our sin and we don't want to do it again. It means that we believe in God's mercy and forgiveness upon us on account of Christ alone. We don't offer an animal sacrifice to appease God's wrath and anger, but Jesus is the cause. Jesus is the sacrifice for our sins, and he is the reason why God is merciful and gracious to you and me. King David said, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. You are blessed in hearing that gospel, in receiving God's gifts of life and salvation. Our prayer is that just as God has forgiven us, we pray that we would forgive others. Just as God loves us in Christ Jesus, that we also will love one another. And as God has, mer has had mercy upon us poor sinners, we would have mercy upon others as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.